we never got approved. So I would like to know that we can have every month an approved. As a municipal Addison, authority, Addison, that is required. Um, as a secretary who records every minute of uh, uh, meeting, even if we don't have a quorum, I produce a set of notes that are distributed and everyone that comes to our meetings are able to read them. They're sent to the board members. We have never not approved a financial were, report. Now, whether it was at the, at, at the level that we felt like it should have been or, or it should have, uh, should have uh, was required, but that's never... That's not true. Each and every meeting, there was not a financial report. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. 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 Wait, let's be clear. So yes. you'll, the question that Allison is asking is an approved, uh, having board mm -hmm. quorum, having quorum to approve the financial. So there was a financial statement at every meeting. So there's two things here. Mm -hmm. um, at every meeting, there was a financial statement. Right. Um, sometimes there wasn't quorum right. to approve the financial statement. Right. And the second thing that we're saying is the financial statement, as we're finding out, yeah. wasn't right. accurate. Yeah. Right. So it let me just accurate. clarify so the, sec Thank you. the secretary that if we were not able to approve due to lack of quorum, I meticulously noted that there were two sets of financial statements to be approved at the next meeting when we had quorum. So there was never one, except there, I think October. There were always questions right. and errors and moving from this column to that column. You're and, right. And there were very we're right. acknowledging it. Right. So right. all I'm saying is that we have to acknowledge that we made mistakes in the past. Oh, I didn't we're say trying, that. We're yeah. trying to work forward right. yes. so that we avoid them in the future. And I'm trying to get a commitment yeah. I'm so that we don't have to be backlogged yes. and yes. confused. I'm, I'm about stating for the record. You make so. most of the meetings, don't you? I try. She's yeah. there. Okay. So, I have a, most of the, uh, so I think if, if there's a you know, a business that's not undertaken that mm -hmm. you know, would provide transparency when you're there, you know, to mm -hmm. make the you know, have the conversation uh, or pointed out to the board, we don't have this, we don't have that. That right. would probably be, you know, welcomed by the board and very appropriate. She's accurate. Yeah. Yeah. She's there. So, yes, so you're right. We're acknowledging. Yeah. Right. I think the big question on the table, mm -hmm. and we're getting the question, right? Yep. And the answer is, but it's a cleaning. Mm -hmm. Right. right. People have, so I think we need to address and that. Collection. Yes. And collection. Yes. So the the board is going to have to vote on the revised plan. Um, we discussed at the December meeting. Uh, this is under new business. Yeah, uh, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're obviously answering a question. Oh. Okay. Either, okay. But, um, can can we first adopt or do we want to adopt the report and then we can go into what maybe some mm -hmm. public comment? Well I don't think we need mm -hmm. we don't need to take a formal action on no, the no, report so we're yeah. Yeah. I think we can move into to, to new business and mm -hmm. honestly I, I think we can I don't see it with nothing being there. I'd like to move the public comment and then for everyone's own edification. One item that is not reflected on the agenda now is that we're prior to the adjournment of the meeting we're gonna have to break into executive session. Right. So Immediately after okay. that's just one um, uh, amendment, I would say, or, or kind of friendly edit to the to the agenda. Uh, so once again, I think this would be the moment in which we would all hard welcome uh, any public comment and or inquiry. So um, I do have questions. We mentioned our primary objective is cleaning. It's also collecting, so right. we can clean. Um, I can think about the one assessment invoice that I received. And one of the things that I suggest is that when we do send out future assessments, they look a little bit better. And they sort of explain really what the objective and the mission of GSSD is. The other thing that I also um, uh, suggest is that, okay, I was told that I could actually go online and make my payments. And for three, well, for four years, I didn't really receive any assessments in mail. So mm -hmm. I was behind. And then I was in a situation where um, I'm thinking, like, I'm going to get a lien on my property. And so I went into mode. You didn't get anything in there. No. Oh, okay. I went into mode, like, what the, and that's why I'm here today, and that's why I'm trying to be actively involved. Mm -hmm. But, so I'm just sharing that tidbit. But when I went to go pay online, I couldn't. And so what if I wanted to pay with a credit card? Mm -hmm. 
that option was supposed to be available. There's other businesses who have lines of credits and things like that, that maybe they don't have the cash available and they don't mm -hmm. use their line of credit, whatever, however mm -hmm. somebody does business. So we also have to think about who we are servicing to get the collection businesses. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we're really thinking about that. No, we're thinking I about think, it. Yeah. We're hamstrung by everything <laughs> Just about everything related to the organization is in Ingrid's name, okay. to be quite honest. And so it limits our ability to do almost anything. Okay. Um, I can't even, uh, it's, it's just severely hampering. So while I went and signed up for QuickBooks Online Payment, um, my account isn't classified as an administrator because I'm on an interim basis. Mm -hmm. So I can't finish the setup process to be able to to allow online payments if I'm not designated as an administrator in QuickBooks. And if we can't get um, Ingrid to respond and, or come in and grant those permissions, then it severely limits our ability to do anything mm -hmm. whatsoever. Well, um, we found out, I'm sorry to cut you off, um, the, the, the phone company, um, the phone renewal was scheduled for December 12th, and they've been sending invoices and inquiries to the previous email, to the email on file. Well, that's a Gmail, not even the current Zoho that's been used. And so I can't even get access to the phone information in order to get the phone turned back on because that's not in, my, in the organization's email. So there's a cascading um, effect of uh, so much of the board and the business of the organization being wrapped up in one person. Mm -hmm. And so ideally the board will move away from that mm -hmm. and um, share responsibilities um, and spread them out so that um, it, it prevents the, the kind of crisis mm -hmm. situation. That I think a few of your questions will probably be better answered once we have access to, you know, mm -hmm. a everything. more, well, everything, everything. Mm -hmm. everything. Mm -hmm. um, and also I want to mention, uh, I think D Dan Connor mentioned at the last meeting last week, um, the payment arrangements to make it, you know, and paying online. Mm -hmm. Did he mention? He didn't mention payment online, but okay, we so always accept payment, payment arrangements. Yeah. And we've often, um, or the organization has often removed finance charges based on the right. payment arrangements yeah. that have been mm -hmm. set up. So that's always an option. Mm -hmm. Always, full stop. I have a question. Ma'am. It sounds as though we, because this is a collective country, mm -hmm. community, mm -hmm. it sounds as though we are in a place where we need to ask the councilwoman through city council if this is an extenuating circumstance that we have a person that's one person that's holding up the good mm -hmm. of the community. Can we legally, can you, through the city, law department, whatever, legally do something that can move this forward? We've been um, talking to legal counsel, um, and you know we did not um, have them on the phone with us today. They were on the phone with us last week and gave us uh, some helpful advice. Um, I don't know that we can go around what the, the bylaws and the you know, the current authorization requires us to do. But um, we can certainly revisit that and talk to the law department and talk to because our we, technical staff to make sure. Because it seems that, as though mm -hmm. we're not, we are being hand strung mm -hmm. by one mm -hmm. person. Yes. And, if we and, the, and, 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 and the law. And the law. But if we so die today or tomorrow, okay. the world's going to keep going. It's not going to miss a beat. Mm -hmm. We hope people will remember us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But the world is not going to stop. So it seems as though we need to figure out. There's there are some things, ways away. There are some things that, so for example, with the bank, they have their protocols, they have their rules. Right. It's got nothing to do with the city of Philadelphia. Right. So, you know, we have to adhere to sure. what their policy is in terms of operating. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge issue. I, wanna, that, that's a, that's I was over there the yesterday big, and they made, under, they made it quite clear that there is no scenario that they can add anyone to the account without the one person and, and, listed and, uh, coming and we, in. And we have, we so we have, basically have to close the account and go start somewhere else. So we contacted uh, Ms. Shepard and she has not responded. Is that what I'm hearing? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Everyone here at this table has. 
<laughs> Except maybe Ms. Evans. <laughs> so how, Allison, how are we avoiding this? Are we requiring two signatories <laughs> yeah, yeah. in the future? Are we requiring so, a generic email that can be accessed? Are we requiring people to have access to the website uh, other than one single person? But it has mm -hmm. apparently it hasn't been done because the response I get always is oh it's Ingrid is doing it it's Ingrid so we have to be because well, from my one, understanding it was Ingrid and it was David yeah so David's so gone. it was always two people and we so it, it was two people so David's it gone. Three. And now, well, maybe so, right. so maybe that's something to be too short. Sure. Sure. No, no, no. But perhaps in regards to having three people, it could be the finance chair. It should be the finance chair, the board chair, the board the board chair right. and then the executive director. I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. The treasurer, the president, mm -hmm. the chair, the treasurer, board, right. and, right. and, right. uh, and the executive director. It should be three signatures. That's a proper internal control. Yes, correct. A couple times an audit's been mentioned. I Absolutely. like that idea. The payment to pay for whoever pays for that. Mm -hmm. I think that the board should be responsible for that and not the taxpayers, like myself, should be responsible for paying for this audit. And I'd also like to suggest we have one employee, is that right? GSSD has mm -hmm. one employee and then we contract Any out. Contract services, That's yes. right. I'd like to suggest what I've heard today tells me that the past the board has not acted responsibly. And I'd like to suggest that that lone employee that we have, I'm not sure how we got that employee, but I'd like to suggest that if we're really gonna start a new day, that we put that job description out in the public to see if there are other people that may better fit that role as that lone employee, being that that employee, even though they're interim, you know, was, became interim as a result of the board, which is, a responsibility to oversee this organization.